Hello and welcome to week five of the AFCB TV preview show. Once again, I'm joined by our match day commentator, Chris Temple, and we've got a lot to get through today. Coming up, we look back at the Cherries' last Premier League outing at Stamford Bridge. We'll also be discussing the return of wide man Junior Stanislas. We talk internationals, and of course, we will be previewing this weekend's game against Leicester City here at Vitality Stadium. But without further ado, Let's rewind the clock two weeks and look back at highlights of the Cherries' last Premier League outing at Stamford Bridge. As Wilson is trying to pin David Luiz and he's turned away from him there and he finds King in a bit of space, looking to release Rico on the left-hand side, which he does now. Rico storming forward, his left-footed ball in is a peach towards Wilson, who puts it over the crossbar. 11 and a half gone in the second half. Chelsea nil, Bournemouth nil. Cherries with their second corner of the afternoon but they're first at their favourite shed end of Stamford Bridge. It's like attacking the north end at Dean Court. In it comes from Rico, swung in towards Steve Cook and cleared away. In fact, it's put over the bar, I think, by Wilson. Aki's got his head in his hands. It's Ake, something. in fact, through a crowd of players, it was Nathan Ake, prowling in the six-yard box, headed down at the near post by Cook and over the bar by Ake from two yards. This is the only man of the big six the shows have got in the next five games as well. As they come forward now with Pedro, Chelsea, Pedro into the air, a little one-two with Giroud. Pedro, great drop of the body, and Pedro, off the substitute's bench, makes the difference. Fine footwork on the edge of the penalty area, and it came back to him on the 18-yard line, and he drilled it into the bottom left corner past Begovic. for Wilson, he was caught from behind, now Fraser might be in, Ryan Fraser inside left channel, wide. Again, heads in hands on the Cherries bench and on the field. Rico to depart in a second. This is Chelsea on the attack at the other end, Alonso just inside the penalty, back to Hazard once more! The goal's been coming for Eden Hazard, that is for sure. He's been at the heart of most good things that Chelsea have done this afternoon. And he has surely put the game even beyond the comeback kings here at the bridge. Five minutes left, Chelsea 2, Bournemouth 0. Well, there we go. Goals from Pedro and Eden Hazard saw the Cherries defeated for the first time this season at Stamford Bridge. Chris, it wasn't a bad performance from the Cherries, but not quite the result that they would have wanted. Yeah, they knew obviously they'd come under a bit of pressure and they managed to hold out for quite a while. You know, a few counter-attacks when they, you know, things, they had a couple of good opportunities in that game. You think of Nathan Ake scooping the one over the bar from very close range. Uh, you know, the Chelsea were knocking at the door for a long time. Azard, you know, he's, he's obviously, we know how he's a world-class player, but he was just having more and more influence on the game. And you have to say, eventually, it's no surprise that, you know, he was at the forefront of, of them, uh, you know, eventually making the breakthrough. And Pedro obviously coming off the bench as well so yeah by no means a, a credit a, a performance to discredit the start of the season but you know a lot of teams are going to go to Chelsea and get nothing this season but but all in all encouragement but obviously the slight disappointment that the uh, the unbeaten run came to an end yeah and of course for 70 minutes the Cherries looked so good yeah it was and the, you could see the confidence that they they built up from going there last season and it's not a ground that holds you know fear for them really you know you go to Manchester City or Spurs two of the bigger grounds that they haven't had any success at um, and you know, what you might not see fear but also you don't necessarily see as much confidence so I think you could see that the Cherries felt like you know there was some belief there but as I say unfortunately the class of Chelsea uh, just told in the end. And of course this season it felt like a very different Chelsea under Sarri didn't it? Yeah very much so yeah I mean they were it's funny sort of watching the the histrionics in the the dugout as well Conte obviously was hopping up and down and Sarri's a very different uh, type of character but yeah you know he's got them playing some some really fast football some great football you can see even the, the enthusiasm of the Chelsea fans as well they've had a you know over the last few seasons they've had some sticky times there you know Marine you know, it all went wrong for him. Conte, obviously, in the end, had to be uh, had to be let go as well. But now you can see the excitement about the new regime, and you know, albeit with only one or two additions, but one or two very good additions. Um, you talk about like we talked about Jorginho before the game, fifty million pounds. I mean. He didn't do a great deal in terms of like he didn't really stand out, but that's you know sometimes the best players are the ones you don't notice. So um, yep, yeah, I think uh, I think they're going to be right up there this season. Now then, before we go any further, I just want to show you a clip from last week's show. I'll be intrigued to know what you think. Okay. Um, whether Lerma gets a go or not. Um, again, as we stand here recording this, I I think he probably won't put him in. But that I don't want him to, to clip this up and send it back to me on Twitter uh, to say you were wrong because we have no idea. Well, we'll forgive you for not getting that prediction correctly, but how did you think that 
Diego Rico and Jefferson Lerma got on last weekend. Have you got any clips of anything I've got right, by the way, from the last few weeks? Um, no, Jefferson Lerma, I thought he did well. I mean, what a game to be thrown into. Um, I think, you know, it was it's a really tough uh, tough environment for him, first time out. Uh, the clip we saw, I, I didn't think he'd play because, because of the nature of the game it was. But actually, you know, I think in the end it was a good call from Eddie to put him in. Um, it certainly will have brought him, Jefferson, up to speed with what the Premier League is going to be like. I think it will be different for him tomorrow um, to be out out there on home soil in a, a Premier League game against, you know, obviously Leicester are a good side, but they're not Chelsea. Um, so again, that's probably I think tomorrow is probably a fairer yardstick. But I think what we did see is that you know his, his passing, uh, he, his energy was terrific, even though it was his first Premier League game as well, um, and he seemed to settle in among those around him pretty well. So yeah, a, a bit like the League Cup game when everyone was very impressed. I think it was a, it was a good start from him. Yeah. Well, one player who we haven't seen in a while is Junior Stanislas, but he's been back in training this week, and you can take a look right here. Man like Robbie. Come on, Jim! 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 Get there! Nice, Jim! Come on, Jim! Let's go! That's better, Tim! Oh, brilliant, Jim! Yes, sir! Good! Good! Take a touch! Yes, Jim! Yes, Jim! Well played! Well played! Just wait there, Jim! Jim, wait there! Well, that was Junior Stanislas back in training over the international break. Chris, he's not played yet this season but it'll be really encouraging that he's back in training for the rest of the lads. Yeah, huge. I mean, I always say about Junior Stanislas, if he'd had a lot more luck with injuries, I think he would have, you know, you could, there's no limit on what he could have achieved because he was in the West Ham team, don't forget, in the Premier League, you know, years and years ago, really, as a very young player. Um, and, you know, was obviously got noticed then, didn't have a, any luck at all with injuries. And I just think here, when he's been in the team and you see him at full flight and he's, he's, he's confident, he can be a match winner. We've seen him seen a couple of dramatic goals, a couple of spectacular goals, set pieces, he offers you another option as well. Although he's gonna to have to do well to get ahead of Rico in the queue for set pieces at the moment. But it'll be a huge boost for him, particularly, you know, the wide players, Sometimes people like Ryan Fraser and you know David Brooks will remain to be seen, but they do go through little dips. Um, wide players, they have you know they're particularly the way Bournemouth play, the energy they play with um, physically, it's a tough ask for wingers particularly. So I think it's going to be vital for Eddie to have a couple of options out wide. Um, Junior obviously you know usually often plays on the left hand side, which is Ryan Fraser has made that spot his own. So it'll be an interesting little sort of balancing act as to where they can get him in the team. Um, but it's huge to have another option back because actually the squad isn't that big at the moment in terms of options. So if anybody went down with a problem, uh, particularly an attacking player, there wasn't a huge amount of depth um, beyond those that are on the bench at the moment. So yeah, and for Junior as well, I know you know he talking to him, he's always tells us how much stronger he is mentally now, um, obviously physically as well. But if, if you keep getting knocks, people will say, well, you can't be much stronger physically because you're still picking up injuries. But some people just don't have a lot of luck, whether it is down to their body or whether it's down to you know an innocuous incident in a match junior is one of those who just hasn't had a lot of luck but mentally i think he's in a good place now he's he knows how to come back he knows how to manage his body and the chances are he's going to play probably next week potentially in the hampshire senior cup game uh, that's going to be here at the vitality stadium so he's uh, he's getting closer for sure and you mentioned that left hand side ryan fraser has been playing so well there and of course we've seen david brooks as well it's going to be hard for him to get back into the side isn't it yeah and again knowing what eddie's like he's faithful to those who've done well um ryan fraser's obviously got a bit of a hamstring issue which he came back from Scotland he didn't play in Scotland's second international so that would be a little bit of a, a concern for Eddie because again he's a, I mean I would say he's probably been the standout player so far this season really so uh, in terms of uh, injury worries you wouldn't want him uh, and hamstrings you know again taking no chances with those it's six weeks of it pings so from that point of view um, having Junior back amongst it just as a bit of cover if, if Fraser is struggling we don't know if Fraser will be fit for the Leicester game um, Eddie was the cards were very very close to the chest on that one today um, so <laughs> I'm not going to make any predictions because if I get it wrong <laughs> it'll be back here next week so <laughs> and you mentioned that Hampshire Senior Cup game on Tuesday it's been switched to Vitality Stadium that could be a really good opportunity to ease him back in 
Yes, it seems a perfect opportunity. I think there'll be there might be one or two in that game who who could do with some some match minutes. Obviously, the League Cup game's coming up as well next week. So actually, the, you think of the likes of Mings and and uh, Musa and Ive and people who haven't been playing. They wouldn't play in the Hampshire Senior Cup. I wouldn't have thought because they've got a League Cup game. So, but for people like Stanislas, who you, he needs to get an hour under his belt. Um, talking to Eddie was talking in his press conference about fitness wise Junior Stanislas came out on top of a couple of the tests they've done over the last couple of weeks so it seems like he's you know he's he's back to sharp but it's just a case of getting those match minutes in so yeah there'll be a nice bonus for anybody coming now to watch the Hampton Senior Cup game that they'll they'll get to see Stanislas and maybe one or two other sort of fringy players as well. Well, someone who has featured prominently this season is Joshua King and during the week the AFCB TV cameras went out and about with the Norwegian. quite a strong player on the pitch. Is that just a natural thing or do you work hard in the gym or like what, what, why is that? I, tr I try to, uh, I try to stay away from the gym. I, the I, I do not slam the weights. <laughs> I don't think I've done a proper upper body session in about four years. Yeah, yeah it's just jeans my, from my dad, thank, yeah, yeah. thank him. Um, <laughs> but no, I don't, I don't like doing upper body. Yeah. Uh, I like swimming. But when I feel like I do too much weight, I put, put, put too much weight, weight on, as in muscle, yeah, yeah. muscle mass, and, and I go heavy and I can't run. So um, I just stick the legs in, in, in the gym, legs and core. The fans really like you for that, like how much you run, how hard you run for the team, and you know, you know you're big and strong lad. Is that something that you're like, quite conscious of, that you have to keep, keep on doing that to earn yeah, the Yeah, I think any player um, have to play to their strength, and I think. Um, my strength is that, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I have to play to my strength and that's probably why I keep, keep playing and why Gaffer chooses me in the team. Well, that was Joshua King. The AFCB TV cameras went out and about with him and the full video will be on AFCB TV next week. Well, Joshua King was one of the players on international duty. For Eddie and his side, it was a great opportunity to, to work with the ones that were still here. Yeah, just uh, just touching on King, he played 180 minutes in two games, which again, speaking to Eddie uh, before the game against Leicester, he said it's a balancing act for managers because obviously you want you actually want your players to play. Everyone to think, oh, you want to wrap them up in cotton wool, it's better for the manager if they don't go. But actually to keep the momentum and the ball rolling at this stage of the season. Um, so he played two full matches, um, thankfully unscathed, which shows you what a, a big part of the Norway setup he is as well. Um, so from that point of view, you know, good for him to get some minutes. David Brooks played 120 minutes for Wales. Uh, so again, he's a big part of Ryan Giggs' plans going forward. And Nathan Ake at the other end of the scale didn't play a minute for, for the Netherlands, which Again, it's frustrating really because he's had two weeks. The training's not as intense at international level um, because they have two quick games, two quick turnarounds. So he's gone and sort of sat around, not sat around, but he's gone and, and not played. So not a profitable couple of weeks for him. But by all accounts, the, the guys that were back here, um, they were really put through it. Um, just talking to Steve Cook for our interview ahead of the game, he said it was like another mini pre-season, to be honest. It was really tough. Using it as a little bit of an uh, invisible line in the sand, if you like to say, first part of the season, you know, good start, that's done now. Um, let's move on to, to, to start again, if you like, uh, with the big run of games coming up. So, yeah, and they had the SAS involved as well, apparently, out in, the, out in Wareham Forest. So they've, uh, they've been trying all sorts this break, yeah. And of course, you mentioned about the SAS, that will not just be good for fitness, but also team bonding as well. Yeah, and when you've got a few new faces and, uh, you know, it came up in the press conference about Jefferson Lerma, how, what's his map reading like in, in the forest or whatever. Uh, I guess it was, this is the sort of thing that will throw, uh, throw people together and, you know, uh, build relationships. And it was in interesting to hear Eddie how uh, basically slaughter Simon Weatherston and, and Steve Fletcher uh, as basically two members of staff who were useless at map reading. Um, and the staff team came last. So I think the players will have enjoyed that. And hopefully, yeah, it was... a. Uh, a good bonding trip all round. And of course, one player that did star for England in the summer was Leicester's Harry Maguire. And he'll be here this weekend at Vitality Stadium. It's going to be, be tough to nullify their threats, won't it? Yeah, I mean, Harry Maguire is one of those players who had a, a pretty quick rise, isn't he? From, uh, you know, he was in the, the Hull under 23 team, what, three or four seasons ago and uh, has all, all of a sudden been scouted. You know, Manchester United were linked with him. Um, Leicester wouldn't let him go over the summer. So, yeah, he's had a, a big rise and credit to him. He's got his head down with Leicester, you know, 
a few players could have been accused of sulking if there was a chance to go to Man United and actually you, Leicester say you can't go. Um, but he's been loyal to Leicester, you know, maybe not necessarily through his own choice, but he's got his head down. Um, he's, a, he's a threat. He's a, you know, he's, he's a threat from set pieces, which is, has been an Achilles heel for Bournemouth in the past. He's a good ball player, as we know. Jamie Vardy's back from suspension as well um, from that point of view. So, again, it remains to be seen how he'll come back fresh. Of course, the one player they don't have this year is Mares, who popped up with that late equaliser at Leicester, which uh, broke a few hearts at the back end of last season. Um, but uh, they've got Gazal now, the, his Algerian counterpart, who they're sort of touting as his replacement. So um, it, he hasn't quite hit uh, the heights yet, but we'll see tomorrow. But if you remember the game last year here, nil-nil, but Bournemouth uh, absolutely dominated. Eddie said they could have had three or f uh, won three or four games with the amount of chances they had. So um, they've been hard to separate, Bournemouth and Leicester, down the years. Five out of six have finished in draws in the Premier League. So, um, yeah, I think at the moment both teams have started the season really reasonably well. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule out another draw. And you mentioned that five out of six draws in the Premier League. The Cherries will really be wanting to, to get those three points tomorrow, won't they? Yeah, and you know, you think of, I think I remember the game up at the King Power Stadium uh, the back end a couple of seasons ago when it, when it sealed the, the top half finish. Um, it, for some reason, they've just been, have really hard, been really hard to separate. Um, I think of the game of, you know, when Simon Francis got sent off um, up at Leicester as well. Uh, so they have been entertaining games. Claude Puel's sides play a different way. They're not as, they're not as much thrust going forward. They're not as counter-attacking as previous Leicester teams under, you know, Know, Ranieri or, or Craig Shakespeare, who was the manager here at the, for the nil-nil last season. But for Claude Puel, of course, um, we know him from just down the road at Southampton. He was actually the manager when Saints won here 3-1, which uh, Bournemouth fans won't want to recall too much. So he's got winning form on his previous visit here. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a different way of playing. I think, I think the Leicester jury is still out a little bit on Claude Puel as the Southampton jury was for a long time. Um, but, you know, he, he, does, he does have his side playing a certain way and we'll see how effective that is. And I am going to ask you about team news again, <laughs> <laughs> as you could probably guess. Who do you see featuring for the Cherries this weekend? I think there's a, still a worry over Charlie Daniels, but you know, Diego Rico came in and did pretty well in tough circumstances at Chelsea. So I think the shirt is Rico's at the minute and Daniels will have to force his way back in. Um, <sighs> I don't know, but I just don't know about Fraser. I mean, uh, the I wouldn't want to pin it because Eddie Eddie was so sort of uh, straight batted uh, about the Ryan Fraser situation. Um, if he's fit, he'll obviously play. Um, but a hamstring, I don't know how much of a worry it is or how serious it is. So I uh, can't give you any inside knowledge on that one. Um, I think the rest of the team pretty much picks itself at the moment. Um, Brooks obviously got left out in the last game. Um, whether coming off 120 minutes for Wales will have given him a bit of confidence and back on home soil. I wouldn't be surprised to see Brooks back in, to be honest with you, um, for this game. Um, but I think the rest of the team is, uh, is as it was, probably. Well, that's all we've got time for today. Join us next week as we'll be previewing the weekend game against Burnley as well as the Carabao Cup game against Blackburn Rovers.